Hello and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Now for those of you that are familiar with the channel, we've done most of the Glen Scotia range. We've done, well, certainly a good chunk of it anyway. Uh, 18, 25, the festival releases. I think I did the double cask on a, um, like a region head-to-head -head a couple of years ago. Um, but now we've got the one that I've been waiting to have open to review. And it's the Victoriana. This beautiful, tall, green bottle, very reminiscent of some Isla whiskies with its kind of green hue. It's got a great history, uh, Glen Scotia. One of only three Campbelltown distilleries run by the same company that owns Loch Lomond and just doing a plethora of really unique kind of off the wall styles uh, like their Campbelltown Festival Edition has always scored well with me no matter which year it is. I love the 18, I love the 25, it's all just fantastic, it really is. This harks back to an era when Campbelltown was thriving. Now prior to 1920 and when Prohibition hit America, Campbelltown was the biggest region for whiskey producing in all of Scotland, which is unusual now when you think about areas like Speyside. But it was essentially the Speyside of Scotland all the way up until the 1920s. And then things just began to shut down because the whiskey was quite expensive and blenders weren't wanting to use it because no one was buying it as much, which was a shame. But back then, things were a little bit different with the whiskey they used to make. It was slightly, uh, it was more heavily peated than what it is at the minute. And it used an amalgamation of different casks this whiskey contains some, well, some whiskey, which is quite heavily peated, um, but it's blended in with a realm of other whiskies, which are kind of moderately peated to slightly less peated. And most of the cask influence is from recharred, really heavily influenced bourbon barrels. But a little bit also, come, a little bit of it also comes from PX sherry casks. So there's some sweetness in there too. It's 54.2%. Uh, this is now an official cash strength whiskey, which is great. And it's coming in like just over 70 pounds, which again is kind of hits the mark for value as most Glen Scotias do. So it's cash strength, it's non-chill filtered. I don't believe it's natural color, um, but that shouldn't affect us too much. And it harks back to an era when Campbelltown were the gods of everything. Some would argue they still are now. Springbank, Longrow, Kilcarran, these guys, they really, really do a lot. Um, but let's smell it, let's taste it, let's talk to you about what's going on with it. It's an unusual nose. There is a little bit of smoke coming through, like a classic kind of Campbelltown ashy smoke, like a tobacco ash kind of smoke. But the sweetness from the bourbon and a little bit of sherry cask is also bringing out kind of like a cotton candy, kind of refined sugar note to it. It almost goes far to say it's rum-like. There's no rum influence in this whiskey in terms of casks, but it does smell a little bit like rum. There's like a caramel apple kind of note to it. Really sticky and sweet and dense. And every time you pick out a sweet note, there's a medicinal smoky note to kind of counteract it. And when you get that caramel flavor, or that caramel smell, I should say, there's a slight, almost like Lafroigy medicinal note comes out. So that is the heavily repeated uh, barrel selection, which is coming out with it. Yeah, cotton candy, caramel apples, tobacco ash, slightly medicinal, almost Lafroig notes. Good balance of all flavors there. Sweet, savory, quite smoky. All those flavors come together on the palate as well. The texture is quite heavy. It feels dense, it kind of weighs your tongue down a little bit. And when as you begin to chew on it, the smoke and the sweetness almost separate to two different sides of your tongue. So that really heavy sugary note from caramel and cotton candy comes to the left hand side. And then the smoky note goes to the right. And in the middle, you kind of find this like crashing of waves of the two flavors together. And then the smoke gets a little bit kind of ethereal in the mouth and it kind of gets to the top part of your palate. 
I'm getting like banana now and there's some coconut coming through. The medicinal note is going away and it's just um, kind of a, a natural, again, tobacco kind of smoke that you get from most Campbell towns, but mixed in with some really beautiful fruit notes. A beautiful balance, very well rounded, and provides you with a little bit of everything. It's a heavy whiskey, there's some really dense textural notes to it, and some heavier smoky notes, especially towards the end. But that is beautifully offset by that banana, the apple, the caramel, the cotton candy refined sugar style. And at 54.2%, again, as a bit of a running theme for cash drink whiskies, it's not overly offensive. Um, I always think of things like Abalara Boona and Glen Farkless 105, and you can taste the booze in those whiskies. Whereas with this, the, the multitude of flavor is kind of offsetting the offensive nature of the alcohol, and it's just making everything so well-rounded and beautiful. Solid eight, beautiful whiskey, great price point, and harks back to a time when Campbelltown ruled the world. And even though only three distilleries exist there at the minute, you could argue they still do. Uh, so thank you very much for watching Whiskey Wednesday. I'm Phil, this is the Whiskey Shop in Manchester, that's Glen Scotia Victoriana, and it is a solid 8 out of 10. Thank you. <laughs>